Welcome to the Think Fitness Life Podcast. Looking for a personalized workout plan for exploring the connections between fitness, fitness at home or hit the and gym, overall well-being. Try a 14 days as we dial of the Think into Fitness all aspects Life mobile app. Get and customized workouts from pushing your limits in the gym from a qualified professional who will be in your corner every step of the way. Visit www.thinkfitnesslife.com to start your free trial today. That's www.thinkfitnesslife.com. We are live once again with the Think Fitness Life podcast. Today I am with author, bodybuilding competitor, and fitness coach, Carrie Barrage, who helps people cut the anchor out of their lives and live a healthy, more fulfilling lifestyle. She's here with us today to share her personal fitness story. And the pun intended with cut the anchor is actually the title of your book, correct? Correct. Yes. Awesome. So I'm sure somehow that relates to your story. Yes, it does. <laughs> awesome. So let's go ahead and dive in. Where, where would you like to begin with your your story. Okay. Well, I'm going to dive in and start back 21, 22 years ago. So to that point, I had like, I had worked out and stuff, but never, you know, I'd never lifted weights. I'd like did step aerobics and, you know, just kind of that kind of stuff at home. Jane Fonda workouts, that's how old mm. I am. And then I got into, I had a lot of, I did not have a lot of self-confidence and self-esteem from early, early teens to 35. And so I had, I was in an abusive relationship and as crazy as this sounds, I was the only time I was really allowed out of the house without him being with me was either to go work at the school. Cause I would work at the lunch hour supervision or to go to the gym. Yeah. So I started going to the gym and I thought, well, if this is the only time I'm allowed to be away from him, I'm going to stay here for a long time. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, milk so, these minutes. Yeah. Exactly. And so when I'm learning something new, I like to like see who knows what they're talking about and then mm. get help from them or follow them, mm. that kind of thing. And so there was a just this random guy at the gym and he clearly knew what he was doing when it came to weights. So I just walked up to him one day and I said, I'm not hitting on you at all. I just want to know, is there any way you could show me some you know, weight train, like just show me how to lift weights. Just show me something because I don't know how and I really want to. So he said, absolutely, sure. And we act ended up being workout partners. So we were there five, like we would do a four day on, one day off, four day on, one day off. And we did this religiously for over a year. Mm -hmm. And it was just my time to get away from the house. It was, and without him knowing, he actually gave me myself, helped no one can give you your self-confidence, but he helped me without knowing my story at first. He didn't know that I was being abused, but without yeah. knowing that, just by encouraging me and, you know, helping me out with the different moves and stuff, he, yeah. he gave me self-confidence. Yeah, you, you build up that self-efficacy like little by little, right? Yes, little by little. And then one day he said, like, you're really, you've got the body for this. Why don't you go into bodybuilding competitions and I was like no way I don't want to be on a stage with like not wearing very much and because I'll I'll preface that with I have Tourette syndrome mm. and you'll see me twitching a lot today my Tourette's are really bad today and again I didn't want to be on stage where people could see me twitch yeah and so he just kept he kept you know not like he wasn't bugging me about it but he just sort of kept putting little nuggets of you know I think you could be really good at this so finally I thought yeah you know what I'm gonna I'm going to do this. And th and then, then, yeah, I got, I got into bodybuilding and my got first kind of, that's when you got kind of hooked, I guess, when you yes. got, were competing. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I took third in both my competitions and that's my awesome. very first time. Yeah. So it was, it was really, really good. And it just gave me the confidence like to be on stage and it, to that point, as funny as this sounds, as I'm actually saying it. It was the hardest thing I'd ever done to that point. But I've done a lot of, I was a single mom of three kids, raised them on my, pretty much on my own. Yeah. Uh, I started like a business when I was 28. 
I was in an abusive relationship. So I'm just thinking as I'm saying this, but that still was the hardest thing I'd ever done to that point. Even Why? Though other Why is that? Were. Because it was the eating. And mm. again, I'll bring this up. I was anorexic from the age of 17 to 35 when I started was the that bodybuilding part of the diet. Abusive kind of cold for the relationship? No, no. I started be. I was anorexic from the time I was 17. I actually started okay. with athletica anorexia, which I don't know if you know what that is, but no, it's where no. you limit your food. But so, yeah, you're not eating much. So that's the anorexia. But then you, I would work out like crazy. So I remember living at my parents' house. I was, you know, still when I was 17. And I would limit what I, what I ate, of course. I would like hardly be eating anything. But then I would work out like crazy, like for two hours. And then I'd go to bed. So I'd go to bed early so that I didn't have, I wasn't tempted to eat. Uh, and okay. I was hooked at that time. I was, again, I wasn't lifting weights, but I was hooked on the uh, working cycle. out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so leading into the bodybuilding competition, I was anorexic. Nobody knew it. I hid it. Mm. I hid it from everyone. Or I, I think I hid it from everyone. I'm sure some people knew and yeah. didn't say anything. And so I had told my bodybuilding coaches, because I had, I hired coaches, that I was anorexic and mm -hmm. that I was going to need help coming out of the, you know, the eating portion right, of it. Right. But so to answer your question, it was just, it was the eating part that was so yeah, hard. Yeah, I bet. To kind of have to overcome that. And then you had to get to a point where you had to eat, right? To blow up the muscle and recover and, and, and manage more proteins and carb loading and cycling, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was hard. And I was with old school trainers. I mean, yeah. they did a great job. They got me third place, but they were old school. What I mean by that is there was no cheat day. There was no cheat meal. There was no cheat day. There was no cheat anything. No cheating for 16 weeks at all. Yeah. Zero. And I'm the type that I follow the rules. So if they said no cheating. I didn't cheat ever. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I didn't cheat at all. And so for 16 weeks, when you're used to being like anorexic and the way I ate was just little bits, little tiny bits all day long. And you can't do that when you're mm -hmm. on the bodybuilding diet. So yeah, you have to eat more yeah. fuller meals, right? Get your metabolism working for you, right? Yes. Yeah. So that part was tough. Were yeah. there um, some mental barriers you had to overcome along the way? I mean, you know, you talk about kind of even just going to the gym. I mean, was there kind of a contemplative stage, you know, when you were in this abusive relationship and you weren't really allowed in the house, allowed out of the house, like what led you to kind of start thinking about the gym in the first place? That's a good question. And, you know, it's been so long. I don't know. I think I started because the, the gym, that particular gym that I was going to had just opened up. It was like our new, new gym of the, of the County where I live. Yeah. And I think I wanted to check it out. And then I, I think I just needed something for myself yeah. to get away from him. Yeah. And then when he said, this, this sounds so crazy <laughs> because I have so much self-confidence now, but when he said, well, you can go to the gym, then I, then I just thought, yeah, okay. That's, that's I'm the going. one I'm and going I'm, to. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I was there three hours every day. Everyone knew that I was there from new 9 a.m. Yeah. to noon. And, and it was probably like your thing. healing time. It was like just your time, just like let all the crap go and kind of be in your peace for the you know the, the little the little bit of the day that you get. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And even my kids knew. Don't call me between nine and noon unless you are really really hurt. <laughs> and I only ever had one call. I, I ever only ever ever had one call because my son was in the hospital. That's the only call I ever got between nine. And knew because they knew that was my time. Yeah. And you're right. Like I needed to just Compress, forget about what was or, happening. Yeah. yeah forget about yeah. what was happening at home. And I could just be me because nobody knew. Right. So do you, I do you think it, it everyone. ultimately also built the strength and confidence you needed to get out of the situation? 100%. 100%. Yeah. So I if was like out harnessing of it. this. Yeah. I was out of it before the competition. I had ended. Wow. I had got him out of because it was my house. I yeah. paid for it. It was my house. So I got him out before the competition. And that's really uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was that kind of like a goal in mind of kind of like, all right, you know, no, it just kind of happened that way. It just happened. Just kind yeah. of fell I into just, place that way. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, the, the friend that was training me, he's actually a police officer. And so finally he knew, he kind of gathered what was maybe happening just by maybe things I was saying. And he finally asked me and I told him, yes, I was 
being abused. And, and so, you know, he didn't help me leave, but just him reinforcing that I was a good person and that I, you know, didn't deserve didn't deserve it. that. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, just by his help. So I do, you know, I believe I have that we all have guardian guardian angels in different times in our lives. And he definitely was a guardian angel at that time in my life for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. And then just kind of bring it back to the question of like overcoming mental roadblocks like that is absolutely one. I mean, like the kind of the mental prison of manipulation that you kind of get stuck in and trapped in and to, to overcome that right before your, your show. I mean, talk to us about kind of the delayed gratification you felt stepping out on that stage or fear, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually, it was such an amazing, I, two days, but such an amazing, mm. you know, couple of days. It was, I, yeah, it was just such a liberating feeling that yeah. A, he was gone. B, I was stepping into my own and knowing that, that I didn't deserve that and that the strength of my body and my mind. So not only did I get strong in my body with the, you know, lifting weights, but also strong yeah. in my mind. And yeah. I knew at that point I could do anything. And yeah. I've lived my life in the last 21 years knowing if I could do that, I can do anything. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I love, um, I love kind of looking at the transition that you made is almost like living in, in scarcity versus abundance. And you just like, when you get this place of abundance, it's like, you want to share it with the world. And clearly you've done that with your following and your, your writing and things like that. So did, it was it after this first show when you started tra training and getting your certification? Yeah. So how that came about, and I had, uh, I already mentioned that I have threats. So at that time, a girlfriend of mine kept saying, you should be a, you know, a fitness coach. And I said, no way. I do not <laughs> want to stand in front of people and twitch. Cause that's if you stood on stage, you could do anything yeah. now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because I was just so insecure about my twitching. Yeah. And so she just kept at me. And again, thank the good Lord that I finally said to her, fine, I'll just take the course, the courses. Cause I thought just, I'll just get her off my back. But also I thought I could learn something, you know, for myself Valuable, too. Valuable, right. Yeah. And then I started taking the classes and I just fell in love. And the reason I got into coaching, the whole reason was I wanted to coach in my home. I wanted my basement to be raw, meaning I don't have all the weight machines. I don't have, you know, it doesn't look like a gym. It's very raw. And the reason I wanted it that, and I, and I live in a beautiful home now, and it's the same thing. I don't want my basement workout area to be all bells. Pretty and dolled up, it. right? Yeah, yeah, I want it to be raw. And the reason I do is I really wanted to empower people, but mostly women. I wanted to empower them through fitness. Yeah. And I wanted them to know that they can come to my house and it doesn't matter if your hair is done. It doesn't matter if you have uh, makeup yeah. on. It doesn't matter yeah. if you have holes in your, in your workout attire, just come. And I, I run my, my coaching very raw. So I'm very authentic with my people. They know everything I've been through. I'm very yeah. honest because I want them to have a, a safe place. Because I don't know what's going on in their life, right? And, until they share it. I don't know if they're being abused. I don't know if yeah. they have no self-confidence or self-esteem. You know, I don't know all these things until they share them. But I want them to know they can come and be just, just be you. Just be yeah. authentically you. And there's yeah. no judgment ever. And so that's why I got into it. And it just, it fuels my heart to know that I've helped over 200 women either, you know, get out of, of bad relationships or, yeah. or just gain self-confidence and self-esteem and yeah. become the, the women that they're meant to be. Yeah. And so it's, and it's super powerful. It's so great. It's like they say, you know, for first part of your life, you, you kind of discover your gifts and the second part of your life, you share it with the world. And it's so cool that, you know, your story is what you help others do and, and paying it forward that way. And I love kind of just the awareness you bring to your coaching, because like you said, just based on the, the you know path you've had to walk, like you just never know what someone yeah. else could be going through. So like, let's just make it as, as safe as possible, but at the same time, not focus so much on the appearance, which I think can get, you know, it can, it can get, it can be really loud in this fitness space, right? Just the appearance of everything can really drown out people's little motivation they have at the time, you know, to start. But I think it is so important, like just kind of how you 
stepped on stage, like at that point, you're, you're showcasing all the work. You already did all the work up to that yeah. point. You know, you're just kind of like showcasing, Hey, this is what happens when you stay really committed and consistent for a period of time. It's almost it's like the trophy at the end of the tunnel that just comes with all the good changes that you made in your life that, that made more of a difference anyway than yeah. how you look, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I, I love that you, you really created a safe place for, for other people. So what are some of the major life lessons? I know we started talking about them, but maybe some other life lessons that you feel like you've learned along the way that you'd like to share. There's a few. So I, I live the 80, 20 rule and people talk about it, but they don't like, I don't know how many people live that way. So when I see I think the people 80, know 20, why it, but I'm, I'm, yeah, go ahead and explain yeah. what it means in life. Yeah. So to me, what 80, the 80, 20 rule means, for example, you go to the grocery store, 80% of what you put on that conveyor belt should be all healthy foods. 20% can be your chips or your chocolate or whatever it is that you like. But as long as 80% is your fruits, your vegetables, your protein, you know, your good carbs, all that, it can be for parking your car. If you can park and walk, wa like, especially if you're going to the gym, why are you going around in circles till you get the front parking? Like you're, you're going to the gym, park far away and walk, get your steps in or, you know, take the, ele take the stairs, not the elevator 80% of the time, yeah. you know, sleeping. It can be all these things. 80% get, you know, get your, I mean, you should always try and get a good sleep, but at least if 80% of your week is a really good sleep and then, you know, two, two days or whatever, 20% isn't as good of a sleep, then it like go for the 80, 20, always go for the 80, 20, even with, even if you're eating junk food, go mm -hmm. for the, the stuff that is, you know, pretzels are better than chips, right, for example, right. popcorn with no butter is better than chips or pretzels, you know? So always be kind of striving for the better choice, but nobody is going to even, I don't know, even your elite athletes, they're not, it's they're not a hundred percent, they're not a hundred percent. And so with that, you can allow yourself to not beat yourself up. If you're doing 80-20, then you can have that 20 and not beat yourself up about it. Go have that drink if that's what you want to have on a weekend. Go have, you know, the chips or the chocolate or the ice cream, whatever it is you want. It just should only be limited yeah. and then just don't beat yourself up. So that's one for sure. And definitely an important aspect to take a little pressure off, right? I mean, especially mm -hmm. people who are just starting or thinking about starting you know, you, you get into a point of paralysis by analysis. So just going into it of like, I'm going to just try to be 80% good all the time, best I can be all the time, rather yeah. than that need to chase this idea of perfection that's unattainable, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And another one, I'm a huge, huge one on baby steps. Baby steps add up. Mm -hmm. They add up and people yeah. don't realize that. So it can be in anything. It doesn't have to be with fitness. I mean, it could be read 10 pages a day and all of a sudden you've read a book, right? right. Or if you, if you can only get out for, I don't know, two minutes of a run, two minutes is better than nothing. Right. It's, right. It'll add up. If you go two minutes every single day, you've just done 60 minutes more than you would have if you had in a month than you would have if you did nothing. And it's very so, action-based. You know, it just gets people doing and going, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then the baby steps add up. I just had yeah. a client the other day. I, I do testing at kind of like a month in. So they kind of get their bearing. And then I do a, a test three months later. And, you know, as trainers, we see the difference. We see how much you've done. But sometimes the client doesn't think that they've done any, you know, have improved. Right. And so this one I was really happy about. She almost doubled because she was saying, I don't, you know, I've she comes three times a week and she's like, I don't know if I've really improved. And I said, wait till your, wait till your test next week. And so she did it. She almost doubled everything. And when you think about some of the things, doubling is really, really hard to yeah. double the amount of reps you've done in some, some things it's, you know, a little bit easier, but like squats might be easier, but on some things, it's oh, or, tough or to some double. people might argue even harder with squats. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. True, 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 true. But, but yeah, so she was blown away by that. And I can't yeah, her fitness her level and her steps. volume and her capacity. Yeah. 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 She was blown away. And I was, you know, because I see it yeah. in, in my clients. They just, I think we're all like that. We don't see our, our wins as much as we, because we're also hard on ourselves. Right. I was just going to say, I mean, the kind of whole lack of 
of, I, I live in a similar realm, obviously a lot different background, but really poor self-efficacy, like low belief in myself, but starting off and low self-confidence. And, you know, it really definitely, it just kind of comes with that package of not really going to give yourself that much credit when things are going well. And, and you do as a coach almost have to like plant that seed for them in their little garden and, and help kind of nurture it and help them grow it and see it too. Because you're right. I mean, someone can just really, you know, have their nose on the pavement and just kind of grind it out or just kind of trust the process and, and never think they're really experiencing changes because they, you know, they wake up and see themselves in the mirror every day. It's yeah. kind of hard to notice those changes. Yeah. So there's a book called talking about this. There's a book called The Gap and the Gain, and it's not about. I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's so it's not necessarily about, you know, fitness, but you can still use it for that. And so basically what it is, especially with um, type A personalities, is we see where we're at and like this is where we want to go. This is where we're at. And this down here is where we were. We just focus on I'm not there yet. I'm yeah. not there yet. I'm not there yet. But what we have to realize is we have to look down and go, holy, look at where I came. Look at where right. I came from. Right. Because hopefully there's never that that ceiling is never there because as we as we get closer, we raise it. Get closer, we raise it. Like we should never just be settling, right? To keep the carrot in front of the ox, the whole or in front of yeah. the cart, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, look where you came Give from. That's credit. the important yeah. part is at sea. Holy. Like, I, or I, I remember a friend read that book and he wanted me to do the little exercise with him that came out of that book. And it was like every day we were going to write down like 10 things we did really well that were like little wins of the day. And to yeah. your point, like they built up really momentous into feeling like, wow, I got a lot done, you know, these 10 days. Right. And you're right. We just we're so busy. We're so busy, you know, human rather than human beings that we kind of forget to pause for a second and, and look at how far we've come and just appreciate that for a second. Yeah. And I think that's really important, you know, with with fitness, too, when people are getting started is always. Well, this is with anything. Celebrate your wins like every day. I always say to my my clients, celebrate your wins, because you know what? Just showing up at the gym might have been your win for today. Maybe yeah. you only stay 10 minutes, but you got there. That yeah. might, maybe your kids are fighting or your husband's mad at you or your wife's mad at you, or you, you know, you just witnessed something horrible or you've gotten a car accident another way, whatever yeah. you got there. That's a massive win. That's a yeah. huge win. And we Absolutely. forget to do that. And when we start writing our little wins, like you did, then it's like, oh, wow. I like, I rock. I, that, I had a lot of wins. Yeah. And that confidence, is like a fire just kind of grows. Yeah. So is yeah. that going to be the title of your next book? Is that spoiler alert? Is that the title of your, you know, what you're working on? <laughs> no, what I'm working on actually is all my neurodiversity. So I have ADHD, Tourette syndrome, OCD, oh, cool. and anxiety disorder. So that's and you're gonna, my next book. And help like kind of coach people through those? Yes. Nice. Looking for personalized workout plans? Whether you prefer to train at home or hit the gym, Try a 14-day free trial of the Think Fitness Life mobile app. Get customized workouts, nutrition guidance, and coaching from a qualified professional who will be in your corner every step of the way. Visit www.thinkfitnesslife.com to start your free trial today. That's www.thinkfitnesslife.com. Yeah. So before going into more of your future stuff, what advice do we have for from you for people who are feeling stuck? Maybe they're stuck in a, an abusive relationship and we can't even get out of the house right now and don't they can't even go out in the house to work out. If you yeah, if you can't even go out of the house to work out, there's lots of, you know, you can hire coaches online, you can do fitness classes online if you don't just want a one-on-one. -on -one. You can look up things on YouTube. Just even just start with three minutes or five minutes a day. If that's yeah. all you can do. And from there. yeah, even if you're yeah. in, you, do, you don't need a gym. If you, if, if all you have is to be able to just go in your room, even close the door, lock the door and you're in your room, you can do body weight stuff. You don't even need weights. Like just yeah. start or go. If you, you know, if, if you are stuck in home, but you, you can get out to go for a walk, go for a walk around the block. Just even just go for a walk around the block. Just start with something. Yeah. And like I said, there's YouTube videos. There's lots. Like I have ones that are just three, five minutes long to just get people up and moving and moving. Yeah, realistic, because once you practical, move, you feel good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. 
No, just I'm just kind of you know realistic, practical solutions. Like just take them and use it and go and just start. Yeah, almost like a re- ready, fire, aim. I love to say, right? You just kind of go yeah. and you figure out the aim along the way, make adjustments along the way. Yeah. Can you tell us a, a brief synopsis on on your book called Cut yeah, the Anchor? Right. So it's cut, called called Cut the Anchor, and the reason it's called Cut the Anchor is because we have so many things on our shoulders, and for me, it was blame, shame, and guilt. So I had been carrying a secret for 35 years and it came, it all came out September 25th, 2022. So it's been 18 months as of yesterday that I tried to kill myself. Oh, wow. And so yeah, sorry. and, and, but the, but what's come out of it is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, basically long story short, my daughter found out her, her dad isn't her real dad. And I actually didn't even know either. Oh, wow. Yeah. And because I was in an abusive relationship. I had, he had cheated 35 times. I finally had a one night affair, but that's all it takes. Right. One time. And so I actually didn't know who her dad was and she found out and we are estranged. She wants nothing to do with me. And I realized I, it, it is. And I realized for 30, that 35 years, I had been carrying so much like guilt and shame because I didn't know that it, festered and it ruined all my relationships it it i was anorexic i was i had postpartum depression that turned into depression for 17 years i was a shell of a person i kept getting into relationships that were toxic and it was all because i was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders and so i cut the anchor i cut it it is gone i no longer blame myself i don't have any shame or guilt i'm very open about all of it and you now I want to help women. Stuff go. Yeah, yeah, I let it all go. And now I'm thriving. I don't see my daughter or my grandkids. And I'm very sad about that. But I needed to do this in order to actually live. And right. yeah, and I'm living. And I, I, I've just collaborated on a second book. And I'm now working on my own, my own second book, like the full nice. thing. I'm speaking in Vegas in May, which I've always wanted to speak on stage. And I've been way too scared. And I'm a huge advocate for yeah, that's neuro, exciting neurodiversities. Stuff. Yeah. 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 So and, my life is great. Yeah, you got to be thriving in your life in order to kind of be a, a vehicle to carry others anyway. So yes, who knows what the future holds? You know, hopefully your daughter and, and grandchildren will get to circle back around into your into your story again. I hope I'm so. very hopeful of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So talk, tell me more about the the neurodiversity work that you're doing. Yeah. So I. What I really want to do is because I just, so I've had ADHD, OCD, and Tourette's since I was five. However, I wasn't diagnosed with Tourette's till 27. At the same time, I was diagnosed with OCD. And then just last year, I was diagnosed with ADHD. And after the diagnosis, my life makes sense. That's why I interrupt people. That's why I talk all the time. That's why I process by verbally, you know, verbal diarrhea. That's yeah. why I can literally sit, you know, if I'm hyper-focused, like when I was writing my book, I'd literally look up at my clock. I have a huge clock on my wall and I'd look up and it'd be 5 a.m. And I'd been sitting there since 9 p.m. Just getting Just, all these words out on paper. Yeah. yeah. You hyper-focus. And yeah. so anyways. Yeah, well, it also so seems really, like that book was in you, like ready to come out yeah. too at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. But I, what I want to do is I want to educate people on what ADHD is. And not like not just for kids, but for adults Mm. as well, because if you're working with someone that has ADHD, we just think different. We're not different. Like we're we just think different. We're not disabled. It's actually a superpower. And I'm learning all these things that there's things I can do that I didn't know other people can't do. I can do them because of my ADHD. So I want to educate um, businesses and educate schools is what my main mission for ADHD is to just teach them. And not like a one day, you know, one day seminar. Like I really want people to understand what people go through with and and how, like how we can work together, Mm. even though I have ADHD and you don't, but what can I bring to the table that you don't? And what do you bring that I don't? And we can understand each other better. I just want people to understand. I I like the seek to understand, right? Seek to understand before you Uh judge someone. Just seek to understand why they do something. Or, Absolutely. You know, yeah. So I'm super. Not excited like about a that. what is that? More of like a what is that? Like really trying to yeah. actually be curious. 
Yeah. And yeah, I think it's so important with, with learning disorders because, you know, you're dealing with children at a critical period of their development, right? And how often were, were methods of the past just about kind of diagnose and prescribe and send them on their way? And it sounds like you're working more towards like an integrative approach of trying to, you know, and I think of another quote that's like, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you're going to think it's an idiot. And there was a comic that had like all these different animals in a line and said, okay, well, just to make things simple, we're going to have everybody take the same test. So we know everyone's same starting point, but not everyone, it's not going to be applicable like that, right? No. You need to have multiple resources. And, and to your point, just have the conversation with the staff and, and people yeah. be aware of these things so that they can help facilitate proper growth rather than kind of stunting or preventing. Exactly. And it's funny you say that quote because that quote's in my book and I had never heard that quote before, but I thought it was brilliant for the It's the good. The fish one? On, yeah. yeah. That's like in the chapter of my neurodiversities, that's the mm. one I use. And so that's so yeah. funny you say that because I love that. You well, can't I, ask I, a I, giraffe to jump like a monkey, yeah. right? And you, I had a book that was learning outside the lines. I can't yeah. I can't remember who the author was, but they were two people, two college scholars who had ADHD. And it really helped me just like, I, I, not to make this about me, but it was, there was a level of like, oh my gosh, I, I'm bad at school. And then I realized like, oh, I just need to kind of work my tactics a little bit differently so that I'm catering to my needs and I can actually learn this thing and, you know, regurgitate this information on an exam. So yeah, and I kind of think it kind of speaks a little bit to the way you've kind of been talking about you know, the way you coach people is, is making it more geared at, you know, what, what the individual needs in that given time and how's it going to, how, how am I going to implement something that's going to get them to take action today? Right. Yes. Like, but, but that kind of gets us, do you want to talk more about your coaching process? Do you have like a case study you'd like to highlight? Probably my newest, my newest client, she hadn't worked out very much really at all before she came to me. And she just found me by accident, which was, is even better. I love that. <laughs> and yeah, she comes three times a week and she has gone from being really stiff and like her neck up here and not knowing how to do really any of the moves mm -hmm. to having great form. Now she, I've got her going to chiropractor and massage to loosen up her, you know, her, her back and her neck. And, yeah. and like I said, she's gone from not really even being able to do a push up to now she can do 10 from yeah, her toes, which she couldn't do any before. Like I had her against the wall to begin with, then a chair yeah. and down to the floor. And yeah, just even all her form is just so yeah. much better. And I think we've been together for eight months now. And mm. like I said, when she did her test two weeks ago, she doubled everything or no, it was a little bit longer than maybe a month ago. She doubled everything. And so uh, sorry. Do you know, do you notice change in her demeanor and her mood or confidence? Yeah. Yeah. She, she like, I coach a little bit different. I don't have them if they want to weigh themselves and I, mm. I encourage the uh, measurements, but don't push, but I don't encourage the, the, the number on the scale. And that's mm. only because of my past with anorexia and I'm, yeah. and I'm just in a recovered anorexic. You don't, just become a not at you know anorexic you're always an anorexic just recovered right and so i actually don't push the scale thing mm -hmm. however i do ask them to measure themselves and then you know keep track of that but i also just kind of say how are your pants fitting how's that yeah. shirt fitting yeah. and so like she said she couldn't even like get her shirt off you know to pull over her head because her shoulders were so tight she'd have a really hard time now she's doing that great she has lost weight i've noticed everything mm -hmm. tightening up and now you know clothes are fitting better she's feeling great she's you know like looking more like what's the word just lively and yeah energetic and energetic yeah. she has yeah lots more energy and yeah she's just she's doing so so great that's awesome yeah that's awesome yeah so where can people go to find your book and where can they go to learn more about you so I have a website. It's fit. My company name is fit Two with a two number two fit to motivate dot net. I have a bunch of retreats that I have just entered on there. Oh, wow. So I'm doing a couple of fitness retreats in the summer. I actually would like to just quickly briefly talk about. So Please, yeah. I'm where in, are they? Yeah. Located so I'm where? in Canada. I'm in Alberta. Okay. And it's good. The 
the retreats are going to be in Canmore, which is, if anyone's heard of Banff, it's just 50 minutes before Banff, Alberta. And so we're right in the, in the Rockies and it's a fitness retreat. So one day is hiking a mountain. I always say a mountain because one time I took a girl to Canmore hiking. And when I showed her the mountain we were going to hike, she said, we're hiking a mountain. <laughs> and so devils like, in yes, the details. <laughs> so now I always make sure I say we're hiking a mountain one day. Yeah. One day we'll be biking. So it'll be mountain biking or, you know, people want to uh, rent an e-bike or bring their e-bike and we'll go all in the mountains. And then the third day we'll be on water. So it'll be paddle boarding or kayak. And then we'll have shares each day and like how, how did you know, how'd you feel and, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. we'll have a yoga and stretching each day and meals like are provided. Five, is it a five day? Dinners. Is it a five-day retreat well, or a four? It's, four, it's a four-day, yeah. Four-day retreat, and okay. I'm super excited. These are my favorite, favorite, favorite weeks of the whole year. Yeah. I love the fitness retreats. And Look at you, you go from not, not liking being on stage to, you know, kind of bring, making your own stage in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just love it. And I, I love, what I love is when I see, especially the hiking, well, all of it is when I see people think they can't do it and I know they can. And then it's just, again, I just do the baby steps. Let's just get yeah. on the bike that, and let's go. That and we little can deposit take in that confident bank account. Yeah. Yeah. And we can take breaks. And, and anyways, when they get to the top, for example, when they get to the top of the mountain, because I've take, taken a lot of newbies, but when they get to the top, they all, because halfway through, they're like, I'll just go back down and all. I don't want to keep any, you know, I don't want to make anyone wait. And I'm like, no, no one gets left behind. It doesn't yeah. matter what speed you go. We'll all get there. And then when they get to the top, every one of them has said, thank you so much for not Listen. letting me quit yeah. and for you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. nice and guiding me because they're all in awe of what they just accomplished. I mean, that's a, that's a huge accomplishment to hike a mountain or yeah. to bike in the mountains or to paddleboard if that's, you know, if you're new to that. It's not just for new zone. people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that, all that's on my website. And, okay. and I'll be sure to include all that stuff in the show notes as well. Yeah. I can't remember and, what your other question. Sorry. What was your other question? Where you oh, can reach me and, oh, and my book's was, on there too. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah. about where to find your book. Yeah. It's on so Amazon also? Cut the anchor. It's on Amazon. It's better if you buy it through my, my website, you'll get it quicker. Okay. So it is on Amazon though. And it's, but excellent. if you get it through my website, it's better. So it, again, fit to motivate.net. The book is called cut the anchor. So there's a tab that says cut. Her. And then there's a re tab that says retreat. So all so the, the information more, so is there. The retreats. Excellent. Excellent. And then just the last couple of questions I always like to ask everybody that comes on the show is what is your favorite lift or exercise? Oh, or exercise. Okay. Because I'm going to pick. And or. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm going to pick the, bur the burpee. I know okay. a lot of people hate burpees, but there's so many. It's a love-hate relationship most people have, right? Like I love them. I love burpees, but there's so much you can do. There's so many steps you can do with a burpee. Because you could, you know, for a beginner, they can just step back. They can. Yeah, you don't have to do the push up. You don't have to do the jump. Yeah, you don't have to do all that. And you can step back, not jump back. You put your hands mm. on a, a chair and then you just work up. And then you can get crazy and do, you know, like a, a squat jump with a burp, you know, with the, with the jump back, with the per push up. Right. And, and you can even do jump ups onto a step. You know, when you're yeah. doing the jump, jump onto a step, jump off. So I love the burpee. It's great for cardio. Is great for core. It's upper body strength. It's leg strength. It's everything. Yeah. I love it. Kind of total conditioning move. Love yeah. it. First yeah. person I've had that said their their the favorite was the burpee. So you you take the gold in, in that yeah. area. <laughs> I, I just love it. It's such a good. It's it's so good. And then, what is your favorite quote, or maybe a quote that comes to mind after talking today? Yeah. So embrace the journey of becoming your best self. It's the ultimate de destination. That is it. You can just embrace, mic drop after that one. Yeah. Embrace the journey of becoming your best self. It's the ultimate destination. I love it. I think we can just end right there. That's beautiful. Do you know who said that quote? Or is Me. It, oh, it's okay. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I absolutely love it. Say it to us one more time. Say it for Embrace the journey, journey of becoming your best self. It's the ultimate destination. It really is. It really is. And it's, you know, it's also like a moving target, right? It's like, it's a successive approximation. It's not like something that you get to and you end, you keep kind of working towards it and making adjustments towards yep. living your best life. And 
it's it, it sounds like you live through this kind of thought of the best is yet to come when you're on yes. that road right absolutely yeah i love it i yeah. love it well more books to come more speaking engagements to come from carrie barrage everybody and thanks for coming on the show thanks so much for having me yeah